Remember, Joseph went down into Egypt and married Potiphar's daughter, who was the high priest, and he became the high priest of that land and was second in power to the Pharaoh. This is back in, in Egyptian Akhenaten time. And you can study how these ancient this this teaching of Osiris and Isis came from Joseph. And it was the truth that was handed down from Enoch. And they talked about, in the Egyptian writings, the coming of Christ. And they were these mysteries that they wrote down and spoke of. And you, you joined these mystery schools and you learned about them. But it was at that time just a mystery. Until Christ came. John the Baptist thought it was just a mystery. He was of this Essene. He was the leader of the Essenes. He was one of these leaders of one of these Essene community communities that came down. One group was called the Nazarenes. Jesus was born there at the mount of the foot of Mount Carmel in this Nazarene community. And they all waited for the Christ and the coming of this great answer that they were looking for because there was a plan and the plan was that we were all here being reincarnated coming back again and again living through this darkness and overcoming the darkness until the Christ was born in us well the Roman Catholics they had long opposed the platonic teachings and when they discovered these hermetic texts um, and it was decided that they would destroy these people because they called it magic and they called them witches and they would do whatever they had to do to destroy them Hermes Trismegistus spoke of the city of God in the Nile Valley built around the stars and of the perfect harmonious alignment with earth as is above so is below it appears many of the world's capitals uh, who which were built around the same hermetic scheme the Egyptians believed their netherworld was in the constellation of Orion home of the the, the divine Osiris the star Cyrus and his goddess Isis. Alexander the Great seemed to be greatly influenced by these Egyptian beliefs. After he took Egypt from the Persians, he went out to create the city that they eventually called Alexandria, after him, after his name. And they took all the... Was he, he went down to Heliopolis and he just raised that temple to the ground because that was a war to take over Egypt. And in the pro before they did that, they took and removed all the ancient wisdom in the books and they removed them to the city of Alexandria and they rebuilt another temple to Serapis, which is uh, the way they spoke of Christ at that time and the inner man and the spiritual enlightenment, this esoteric teachings. They brought it all and moved it to Alexandria of Egypt. Plato got his wisdom then from Solon, as it is recorded, and Solon got it from these mystery schools in Egypt. So, you see, even today, these mystery schools have continued in uh, the form of Freemasons and um, Rosicrucians and different groups. And many of the ancient cities in Europe were built around this hermetic, you know, mathematics. Just as Paris was named after Isis. Uh, Faria of Pharos, named after the island, Faria Isis, abbreviated to Para Isis, and then to Paris. So you see, you know, France has been in the news lately. See, it's, it's no, no uh, coincidence that they chose to have this terrorist attack on uh, Friday the 13th in Paris, because this is one of the central places for these ancient mystery schools the Egyptians used the cross and it was called the uh, the crux and sata or it symbolized the life force 
Bruno the Nolan was one of the last men preaching Egyptian and astral magic. His death uh, in the 16th century was not only a message to the anyone else that if they followed this kind of thing, they would also be destroyed. At that point, there was an emergence of these secret societies. And a hundred years later, uh, Freemasons, the Illuminati, and the teaching of the Egyptian symbolisms prospered. So as um, these esoteric believers became more and more massacred and hung on stakes, they were pacifists, they couldn't fight back, although at times they did to protect themselves. Uh, yeah, many of them were called knights. And this is one of the reasons that they became knights, but they were the knights of the poor. They, they, they took on themselves vows of poverty. They truly believed in pacifism, but they also believed in protecting the poor pilgrims that would go and were searching for the truth, and they protected the truth. You see, they protected as knights the Holy Grail or the ancient truth. To this day, it's all as if it's just a bunch of lore and mythology as though it didn't really exist. But they were, they were protecting something, friends. It wasn't a golden cup that Jesus drank out of. See, it's come down to us that way because the Catholic Church has made everything a bunch of hoop, hoopla. Because you see, the Catholic Church has made everything a, a ha-ha, a myth, an exaggeration. When the Catholic Church went after them, you would not believe the, the accusations that they made against them. Of course, accusing them of worshipping Satan. But really, it was the opposite. The Catholic Church, as well as the Jewish religion, was worshipping Jehovah, who really is Satan. But these pacifists who were protecting this ancient truth, symbolized by the golden cup and the Holy Grail, they were the ones that were being accused of devil worshippers. As, 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 and so they massacred them. And they had to go underground, friends. Because, you see, they would not stand up and take over the world by force. Neither would Jesus take over the world by force which is why he died on a cross. And the Cathars were known for throwing themselves into the flames because their physical lives meant nothing. But what was important and what did mean something is the preservation of the truth. This is why they rolled up these scrolls and hid them in the ground and we discovered them in 1945. One of the groups that went underground in secret was the Rosicrucians. They were created by the Rosencruts. They're, uh, they're, they're an interesting secret society. They just popped up overnight. It's invisible brotherhood. They flooded Paris in uh, one, one night. They just walked in in 1623. Now, they, there was rumors that they had the perfect knowledge. The knowledge of the Most High, El Elyon. Very curious because, you see, the Most High in the Old Testament is distinguished from Jehovah. There's another divine being other than Jehovah in the Old Testament. And he's always called El Elyon, the Most High or El Shaddai. So they believed they were the true messengers of Christ. A secret society. Gone underground to preserve the truth. Which was being massacred by the supposed real Christians, the Catholic Church. The Freemasons were a society, a secret society that used to be invisible. But they were formed publicly in 1717. We don't know how long they'd been around before that, but I suspect that they had not. There are always rumors about, oh, they probably, you know, they have uh, myths about how they were really back in the days of Solomon. Well, of course, the ancient 
secret societies have been on Earth for a long time, but they pop up under different names all over the place. And because they were being stamped out by who? By the devil, the real devil. Egyptian hieroglyphics were not translated until the 19th century. Uh, but yet, many of these groups seem to have had knowledge of how to read these Egyptian hieroglyphics. It's known quite easily that, you know, Joseph Smith appears to have had the, the ability to translate Egyptian hieroglyphs. And somehow, coincidentally, somebody came from Egypt with a, a mummy and some, some ancient hieroglyphs and had Joseph Smith translate these plates. And today, this is called the Pearl of Great Price, and it's in the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. Or uh, uh, they have three sacred books in the Mormon Church. A lot of people think they just have the Book of Mormon, but they also have the Doctrine and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price, which is uh, a partial translation of these ancient texts. And at the time, in 1830 something, it was supposedly, you know, not possible to translate Egyptian hieroglyphics. But many of these groups, these ancient Freemason groups, Gnostic, esoteric groups, they had this ability to read the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And obliques from Heliopolis, that ancient city in, in that we kept talking about, and we've always mentioned in many of my videos, where they built that temple of Seraphis and they stored all the ancient records. Well, there was an oblix that had been in Heliopolis and it was brought to the Vatican uh, in the 15th century. It was to be dressed with bronze statues of evangelists and huge bronze Jesus with a golden cross in his hand. Pope Nicholas V died before it was completed. So Pope Sixtus completed this task which was um, finished 150 years later. He did away with all the original, you know, dressings that they had on it, uh, but he did put a cross on it, and a message was written on it, on each side, in Egyptian hieroglyphics. But accord, you know, according to what we know, they couldn't translate it in those days. Then 70 years later, Pope Alexander the Seventh had an eight-sided elliptical space centered on the obelisks in true Egyptian fashion took all this care and consideration for this obelisk that was from Egypt from Heliopolis why because the knowledge from Heliopolis was so important and it was the traditions coming from there which went back through Joseph back to Enoch well after the great fire in London and it burned down four-fifths of the city, a known mason approached the king about an elaborate city layout. It was shot down because um, they didn't have enough time to do this. It was an elaborate plan. But here's the odd thing. A century later, it shows up the same plan to build Washington, D.C. It was a plan to build the city around this octagon Sephirothic tree or the tree of life from the Hebrew Kabbalah. Well, there's another group that you're probably familiar with called the Knights Templar. Another group that the Catholics tried to massacre because of heresy. Well, they fled because of the persecution to Scotland and joined the Mason movement of the Scottish Rite. Well, there's a lot of evidence today that's, that's uh, being brought forward that uh, Prince Henry Sinclair of the Templar movement arrived and went to America 40 years before Columbus did. He went there to make a utopian, a world free of the church. So now you get an idea of why they really actually came here. It was the Catholic Church that was persecuting the Cathars, the original uh, Christian group of people who were preserving the truth. Catholic Church tried to destroy all the knowledge, wiped out all those books, 